Chapter 21 of The Binding Blade is by far the most memorable chapter in the game. It's an all-out clash between Roy's forces and the army of Burn. The chapter features tons and tons of enemy wyvern reinforcements threatening to outrange and overwhelm your team. Every wyvern is out to kill you. Well, almost every wyvern. One particular character, Gal, also known as Gil, seems to be a bit more relaxed about it, even though his dialogue suggests otherwise. The internet is full of reports of the strange behavior of Gal and his troops. Some people say that he doesn't attack, and some people say he suddenly became aggressive. His AI appears to be a lot more complex than most enemies. We could check the wiki, which suggests that talking to Gal with fellow wyverns Milady and Zeus will calm him down. Or you can check inside the game data with FE Builder, which tells you... whatever the hell this is. In today's video, we're going to try and answer all questions about the AI of Gal and his troops. How do they work? When do they attack and when do they not? Does talking to Gal with Milady or Zeus make a difference? Is there a way we can take advantage of his strange AI? First, let's talk about how to make Gal appear. Chapter 21 uses reinforcement zones. If your unit performs any action on a tile inside these zones, such as waiting, using an item, attacking, rescuing, or ending their turn inside a zone by being rescue dropped or warped in by another unit, then you will activate the reinforcements. Since this is FE6, all reinforcements spawn at the start of enemy phase, which we all know is bullshit, but that is a topic for another day. The zone to activate Gal and his troops is here, near the Shrine of Seals, that will make him spawn near the starting point. Using FE Builder to look at Gal gives us a hint towards the workings of his AI. Roy only attack? Question mark? It suggests that Gal will attack Roy and no one else. If we end turn with Roy and a bunch of other units in range, that checks out. Gal goes straight for Roy. If Roy is not in range, Gal appears to move like every other aggressive enemy. He finds a target he would like to attack, and then doesn't. <laughs> this is similar to the AI of some enemy priests. Even though they have no weapons, they still charge at blue units as if they do. If Gal doesn't see Roy in range, then he makes no effort to move towards Roy in particular. He uses the regular targeting AI to look for nearby units that he can kill or do a lot of damage to, and then he just tries to hug them to death. So then why do some people see Gal attack units that are not Roy? The most likely cause is that before doing anything else, Gal checks if Roy is currently being rescued. If he is, then he will simply attack whoever is in range. So to keep Gal from attacking you, you can either surround Roy with other units, or simply move him far away from his spawning point while intentionally leaving a unit behind. That unit will attract his attention and he'll be completely harmless. Now what about Gal's friends? They don't follow the exact same pattern. You can have turns where Gal does nothing and then his troops attack you, but there are also reports of them being completely pacifist. The way Gal's companions act depends on what Gal can do. If Gal cannot attack Roy, they will be pacifist, although just like Gal, they will hug a nearby player unit if they can. If Gal can attack Roy from his current position, however, they will go aggressive, even on units that are not Roy. Since Gal moves first, that means they will perform this check after he has made his move. So if you want to have them act in a pacifist way, it is not enough to make sure Gal cannot attack Roy from a spawn position or from where he currently is, but whether Gal can attack from the square he is moving to. Note that Gal has a 1-2 range spear, so he will see Roy in range even if he is hiding behind a layer of other blue units. So this is what the whole checklist looks like. Number 1. Gal checks if Roy is rescued, and if that is the case, he and all his friends behave like regular enemies, attacking anyone in their range. If he's not, move on to the next step. Number 2. Gal checks if he can attack Roy. If he is, he'll attack Roy. If he cannot attack Roy from a starting position, he moves like a regular enemy, moving next to a player unit if he can, but he won't attack. And number 3. Gal's friends will check if Gal, from his current position, can attack Roy, and if he can, they will attack anyone they see, and if Gal cannot, then they will behave just like he did, moving towards you and hugging your units if they have an opportunity to do so. This checklist is run through every turn, so you can shift their aggression on and off by positioning or rescuing Roy if you want. This likely explains why some people see Gal and friends suddenly go aggressive. They must have rescued Roy, or put him in a spot where Gal could attack him next turn. From what I can find in my testing, 
Talking to Gal with Milady or Zeus does not change the behavior of him or his troops. That means the wiki is wrong. Both of them, actually. There is one way to change their AI though. If you kill Gal, then the generic wyverns will attack you as normal. Simply attacking Gal or attacking or killing the generic wyverns does not change anything. They will stay friendly. So, funnily enough, there are other Wyvern reinforcements in this map that can behave in the same way. Not all of them, only the ones from the other zone in the bottom right. These are not strictly associated with Gal, but you are likely to activate them around the same time since the two zones overlap. It is possible to skip the Gal zone completely by never performing an action inside it, but skipping this purple zone is almost impossible unless you end the chapter quickly. So it might be good to know how you can manipulate the Wyverns from this zone. When you enter the purple zone, Two groups of wyverns appear, one from here and one from here. Here's Milady, pincer between those two groups. The way the AI of these wyverns works is almost the same as Gal's group with a couple of key differences. While Gal is only on the lookout for Roy, the wyvern lords in this group will attack anyone. And while Gal moves before his lackeys, for these groups the unpromoted wyverns move first. And of course the wyvern lords don't have a ranged weapon like Gal does. This makes these groups a lot harder to manipulate and almost completely impossible to pacify like Gil's group, but just to show that it's possible. Remember that the unpromoted Wyvern Rider can easily reach and attack Milady with his Javelin, while the promoted Wyvern Lord cannot. So because the Wyvern Lord cannot reach Milady this turn, the Wyvern Rider acts pacifist instead. The easiest way to deal with these Wyverns is honestly just to fight them. But I think it's likely that this weird AI has saved someone's butt at some point in Farmdom history, they just didn't know what caused it. Now if I heal Milady and put her in a spot where she is in range of the promoted Wyvern Lord, she gets attacked by all the Wyvern Riders that can reach her. Note that this behavior only exists for the wyverns triggered by going in the bottom right corner. As far as I know, no other enemies on this map will refuse to attack your units if given the chance. Nowadays, the knowledge from this video is unlikely to help a lot of people, since those who know will also likely know how to skip Gal's reinforcement zone in the first place, but I am a sucker for this kind of funny trivia, and I also like telling people that everything they knew was wrong. It makes me feel smart. Which is silly, because I am not smart enough to figure all this out. Not by myself, anyway. Thanks to Altissimo for pointing out her findings on how Gal's AI works. She found these things during her ranked playthrough because she wanted to spare Gal while milking the experience from his lackeys. Most of her findings were correct, it's just that there being a path towards Roy doesn't make a difference at all. While doing some research for this video, I came across this ancient comment by Firenom AI guru Grizz, further affirming the things I found while testing. Well, and this part about the generic wyverns and how they behave in a similar but different way, so massive thanks to Grizz for their contributions 9 years ago. So thank you for watching, let me know in the comments how you're going to apply this crucial knowledge in your future FE6 playthroughs, and I'll see you next time.